Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate uh, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket body in supersonic flow using the Sonic Foam Open Foam Solver. So here I've just cloned the tutorial repository, you can find the link in the description. Uh, and uh, we see that, um, so the case directory contains all of the open foam related configuration files, boundary specifications, uh, boundary conditions, um, solver configuration. Uh, the clean Python script is just uh, to remove all of the generated files. Uh, the mesh contains the gmesh script to generate our uh, mesh, uh, our unstructured mesh. Uh, and uh, the run.sh script um, runs the whole tutorial, does the meshing, everything. Um, by simply running the run.sh script, you can get a result. So, <clears throat> first we'll take a look at the mesh. Um, so, this is an axisymmetric domain. The rocket body is here um, in the center. And it's, if you revolve this wedge, uh, you get the rocket body shape. This outer line is a slip boundary condition. This is the inlet for the supersonic flow, and this is the outlet. And here we can see the rocket body. Um, I sort of guesstimated the dimensions based on just eyeballing the SpaceX website for the Falcon 9 rocket. Um, we have a simple uh, circular arc for the nose, a straight line, another circular arc, another straight line, and a chamfer uh, to meet up with the main body, and a simple just uh, flat tail. Um, so this mesh is fully unstructured, as you can see. Um, if you want uh, accurate results, you probably want to go with a, un uh, with a structured mesh. Um, you could easily do that by sort of extruding these lines outward to get a boundary layer uh, mesh. Or so for simplicity, I'll use the structured mesh here. Um, <coughs> so that's it for the mesh. Um, take a look at the run script. So this is the gmesh command that um, outputs um, the mesh in gmesh format, and this is the open foam utility gmesh to foam, which converts the gmesh output to open foam format and deposits it in the case directory. And this is the change directory, which is sort of a last post-processing step uh, where you need to change the names of the boundary, the types of the boundary conditions uh, received from the mesh. Um, and this is finally calling the sonic foam solver. <coughs> um, I forgot to go over in depth uh, the gmesh script, so we'll do that real quick. Here are all the parameters, shape parameters. Um, they're sort of all normalized to the uh, rocket diameter, which we assume to be one, have a value of one. Um, and these, this is from here, this point on is where we produce all of the geometric GMesh entities, the points, lines, surfaces, etc. So it's a fairly straightforward. Um, we sort of generate the points and lines necessary. Uh, from the nose and wrap around until we come back to the nose. Um, it's fairly straightforward, um, can be a little tedious. Um, and finally, we extrude the surface into a wedge uh, that open foam requires for axisymmetric simulations. And then finally, uh, we specify the boundary conditions, I, I mean the uh, uh, physical boundaries. Um, so open foam requires uh, 
the front and back of the wedge to be of we uh, to be of wedge type. So we assign names here, so we can assign them to be wedge types later. This is the rocket surface, the outlet, side, and inlet, and uh, we can utilize the change dictionary uh, utility we saw earlier. Um, Um, so this, when you call change the change dictionary utility um, on a case directory, OpenFilm automatically tries to look for this file and changes. Uh, so by default, all boundaries are assigned the type patch, but we need to change them to more specific physical types. Um, so in this case, in, in the case of the wedges, we wedge 0 and wedge 1, we want to assign them as wedge types, the rocket surface as walls, and the side as a slip uh, boundary condition. The inlets and outlets are fine as generic patch types in OpenFoam, using OpenFoam nomenclature. Um, so that's all there is to it. One last thing is uh, Be sure to set the delta t uh, to be consistent with your um, geometry, your inlet conditions, uh, and your other uh, other uh, physical parameters uh, such as temperature. So, well, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, basically. Uh, you need to ensure that this delta t ensures a current number of less than one um, throughout the whole grid. And uh, uh, so you can do this by sort of iterating and um, going through the logs and the, the log output will uh, print out the max current number and you just have to make sure that's less than one or whatever heuristic you're using. Uh, for sonic foam it should be less than one. Um, for the other open foam solvers there's usually a max current number parameter available which would be really convenient in this case but for some reason sonic foam does not accept max current number so you have to manually tweak your delta t. So, um, we can go ahead and try to run this here. You, you can see it's meshing in Gmesh, and now we're converting, and then now we're finally running. So, as you can see, just running the run.sh script does everything automatically for you. It will take a while. So, here are some of the results. Um, let's take a look at the pressure. So, we can see the pressure, we can see like this sharp change which implies that there's a shock wave forming there. Um, the velocity here, uh, we can see a stagnation point, you know, blue zero velocity at the nose, and behind the chamfer here we have a, we have a stagnation region. Uh, the temperature, uh, with isentropic flow, we would expect the stagnant regions to have high temperature. Um, so, yeah, so that's what we see here. The ambient specified conditions were 25, sorry, two, about 250 degrees Kelvin. But uh, here we can see the stagnant region uh, goes up to 3100 Kelvin. Um, and I believe the Mach number is 2 point, uh, it was quite high, I, I didn't, quite calculate it because uh, I'm sort of using arbitrary speeds and stuff but it's definitely supersonic um, so um, you can actually compute the pressure gradient if you go to filters in, in pair in the uh, pair view menu if you go to filters alphabetical and choose um, gradient of s unstructured data set and select pressure uh, you can, let's see here, 
I already have it calculated here. You can sort of see the, I guess, where the shock is more clearly. I mean, that's where a uh, pressure gradient would be the highest here. So you could see that here, sort of emanating from the nose. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's all there is to this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions um, or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching.